we're rapidly reaching our goal, printing our finished images. However, before we can send our images to the printer, we have to archive an undistorted look at our files, as that's the only chance we have to already see our images on the monitor, as they will be at the end when they come out the printer. Now here in Laukvik, it is right in the north of the Lofoten, and as this is the color class Lofoten, I would like to show you now a few tools with which you can make the raw conversion afterwards much easier. Let's start first with this spider cube. It is really small. You can always have it with you. It's a cube that has a light trap down here, so a spot where absolutely no light invades. Up here is a chrome ball. Here the lightest area of the image is always reflected. And then we have two more areas on each side, a neutral grey and a white. With all that, we can set the white point, black point and the white balance. Another helpful tool, which however does need a bit more room, is the spider checker. This looks like a small notebook with two reference tables in it. We can hold this in the image as well, and this way we can create a conversion profile for the raw conversion. If you think the Spider Checker takes up too much room, then there is a smaller version, that is Spider Checker 24. It has only half the number of color fields, and as you can see, it really is very small, and it really fits into every camera bag. So now we have really done everything we can to do at the location to obtain perfect colors. We'll do the rest at our pixel station in our digital darkroom back at the hotel. We've brought a whole load of things to Norway, the first of which is our ISO monitor. It's a 27-inch ColorEdge CG2730 with built-in calibration sensor, all that you could wish for. We've also got a Pixel Station Nano here. That looks quite tame, a small box. It's a real whiz with numbers, a really high-performance workstation. These Pixel stations are built by the Pixel Computer Company and are especially optimized for the requirements of photographers and videographers. Over there is an Epson P800. That's a DIN A2 photo printer that really produces fantastic images and will be printing on the excellent Ilford Gallery Prestige papers. How we managed to get exactly what we have seen on the monitor to come out on the printer is what we're going to look at now. The first step is just to manage the colors in our file. For this reason, we've taken reference images on location with the spider cube and the spider checker. 
We now have to extract conversion profiles from these reference images for the raw converter, which enables us to get the file as true color as possible on the monitor. So, we've got the spider software here, and now we open the reference image with this spider checker. I've just converted that into a 16-bit TIFF. You can already see these are the same color fields as in the reference table, and now it's our job to get the color fields and the reference table as superimposable as possible. And now I just have to save this conversion profile. Colorimetric is the right setting for landscape images. We're working here with Adobe Camera Raw, and you can now see the image here. Now I'll apply the settings. What has happened here is actually the reason for why I'm doing all of this. If we now go into the HSL settings, you'll see what has changed. This is the standard setting, that is everything in the original position, and this here is what the conversion profile makes of it. This way, you have the guarantee that the colors in the file correspond exactly with reality. Because of that, the white balance is also done. We can determine the white point and the black point easily using the spider cube. And now we'll apply the conversion settings that we just determined to the image that we actually want to convert. And if we open the image with these settings in Photoshop, then we now have the perfect color-neutral basic raw material to further process our image. Now, you will probably say, doesn't change so much in this situation, and if I apply another look to it, then it is not a case of reality any longer anyway. That is a justified objection with many areas of application. I just wanted to show you with this example how to do it when absolute color precision is essential. This is not perhaps always the case in landscape photography, but you may want to take a photo of a car in a particular color, where the color has to be really exact, or a dress, or you want to do really pro artwork where absolute perfection is vital and that is what you can achieve with these two tools that I've shown you here. So now we've reached the point where our file on the hard disk is the perfect starting point for the image processing. But we can only see this file as what the monitor shows us. And a normal monitor just doesn't show us exactly what is really in the image file. So, what kind of monitor do we need to have a chance at the end of having our images absolutely color neutral? The answer is simple. You need a graphics monitor. I have brought along a ColorEdge CG2730. Like all ColorEdge monitors, with one exception, it is capable of the complete Adobe RGB color gamut, and that is enormously important for image processing. Firstly, all your cameras can use this color space. And secondly, it is very important because printers like the Epson P800 can bring considerably more colors to paper than the much smaller sRGB color space provides. That means, when you want to soft-proof, then you need a wide gamut monitor that is a large color space. In that case, a 99-something percent Adobe color space coverage. And that's what you get with ColorEdge. The next big topic is the topic of homogeneity. You all know that every lens vignettes, some more than others. That's not the real problem. After all, you can easily remove it. The problem is, a monitor vignettes too. For this reason, we measure color edge monitors in lots of fields, lightnesses and colors, and then record a correction profile. ISO calls this Digital Uniformity Equalizer. And thanks to this individual correction, we can guarantee that vignetting that you can see on the color edge monitors are actually also in the image. And so you really remove dark corners and not, as in the case of monitor vignetting, add light corners. So, now we've used the keyword calibration several times, and so it is high time to take a closer look at the topic of calibration. What is a calibration? 
A calibration is actually nothing more than a technical measurement between a desired value and an actual value. To be able to understand where deviations in the color display can occur, we have to briefly look at how a monitor works. You've all most probably heard of RGB colors. RGB stands for red, green, blue. And those are the three primary colors from which a monitor can mix all other colors. To do this, each pixel is made up of three so-called sub-pixels, a red one, a green one, and a blue one. Each of these three sub-pixels can glow in 256 levels of brightness. So in 8-bit modus, we have 256 times three possibilities to mix colors together. If you want to calculate that, it's millions of color shades, and only one is the right one. That is exactly what we want to achieve, the perfect mixing ratio of red, green, and blue, so that the monitor exactly shows us what the computer dictates. What do you need to compare the desired value, that is the command that goes to the monitor, and the actual value, that is what the monitor makes of it? You've got it. Eyes, as the computer has none. To do this, you use either an external sensor or, as with the ISO CG series monitors, an integrated sensor. It can be found at the top in the edge of the monitor. Calibration then means, firstly, to measure if our device is precise. Usually the result is that it is not totally precise and so needs to be corrected. And this is the second step, alignment. Where exactly the alignment is made makes the difference between two more terms that you've certainly already heard, namely software calibration and hardware calibration. One thing which is the same with both is that you first need to determine the need for correction. So you use a sensor, no matter whether integrated or external, to measure how big the errors of this display device are. The next step is to correct them. With the software calibration, you correct as much as possible using the on-screen display, and all that is still left to be corrected is written into a correction profile which goes to the graphics card. The combination of these corrections here on the on-screen display and the correction profile should lead to a correct display on the monitor. But that comes with more or less loss of quality. The more need for correction there is, the higher the loss in depth of color, which can be visible, for example, in the demolition of the tonal values in the soft gradients. As we don't want any loss due to the calibration, we at ISO prefer a hardware calibration. This means we correct the actual monitor. In each monitor, a lookup table is saved. That is only an electronic table which tells you in which level of lightness the red, green and blue pixel should glow to create a certain shade of color. And this mixing ratio is then directly corrected in the lookup table. The good thing is, it is without loss, and therefore our hardware calibration has no negative influence on the quality displayed. In the final episode of Color Class Lofoten, we'll be looking at how to put the finished image onto paper. But there is a range of variables here too that you have to consider that you don't have any unpleasant surprises when you are printing. Spectral photometer, ICC profiles, soft proof, what can all these do? This is what you will find out in the last Color Class Lofoten.